very excited now to bring you the football side of things. I'm sure you are too. There will be a similar amount of questions afterwards as well. But without any further ado, we've got a new gaffer. We're all excited. Season tickets have gone well. It's welcome to Tommy and his team. Little man of four. whether it be on something like that fantastic project. By the way, Jim, I need to sign a new contract. I'll be here when stage three happens. <laughs> but, but not only that side of it, obviously, wait, I'm new to you, you're new to me. These two, you don't know who they are yet, but I'll introduce this is Hugo, who's worked with me at about three or four different clubs. He's been my right-hand man. He's, he doesn't look like me, he doesn't sound like me, but he thinks exactly the same as me. Um, and Jamie here is somebody I took under my wing about five or six years ago when I was the head of recruitment and then the director of football at Bristol Rovers. Um, I showed Jamie what I see as the right way to recruit people as a proper due diligence and as a proper process that we like to go through to make sure that we feel it's not, it's not an exact science recruitment but what, it, what we need to do is try and get as close to the profile of where that we see the right fit for our team to get here and it's, that's not just about looking in the magazine and going yeah I like him and yeah I like him and yeah I like him just because he plays for whoever they play for and he had one good season so between us the three of us we probably worked together in, all in all about nine or ten years together so they, these are the people that, are, that I wanted to bring with me to the club uh, when I joined and I'm delighted that the, the chairman and, and, and Terry have helped me to, to get this to Richard's still going to be involved Richard's also Part, part of our staff, um, but he's on, a, he's on a holiday that was booked way before this was this was planned. So Richard Ryan will also be the, the next part or the other the other part. You'll not see Jamie around too much. Whenever we're playing, he's likely to be out watching other football for potentials. Like I said when I first came to the club, recruitment's not about the here and the now. It's about knowing and have the knowledge and the the capacity to have your jaws open when that fish falls out the net basically and we can grab and I know a lot of people before any questions are asked I know a lot of people get a little bit anxious at this time of the year but as I did probably stupidly answer to one tweet I've never seen anybody win anything in June you know I'm not I, well trust me it doesn't matter what's signed between now and when we go back to pre-season training they'll all be great players because they wouldn't have kicked the ball and you wouldn't have seen them yet so they'll all be great when they play, you can make a judgment, don't make it after one game or two games, give them a little bit of time. But what we'll bring, every player that we bring to the Shaw Football Club in this summer, in this summer, will have exactly the same intention as we have. We'll have a collective intention from the group, the players, the staff, my support staff, which includes physio and uh, Brad in the sports science department, and anybody else who comes to work with us, we all want to be going in the same direction. And that is to make sure when that does happen, I know it's not on there anymore, when that does happen, you have a team that warrants that, that. Because at this moment in time, I don't feel, looking at the recent history of the football club, that your football club's been represented well enough over there. And that's my job, and my men's job, to make sure we put a group of players together that you're going to, a, you're going to be proud of, but B, you're going to want to come and see every week. Win, lose, or draw. There'll be more wins and draws than there ever will be losses under me, oh I go, because he's never, he's never too quick not to let one go, so like I said, my first aim is to try and get to stage one on there, so, so if I, if I, I, know, I know I do support for them five or six games at the end of the season, and truly honestly, if you travel to East or you travel to Wheelston and, and the lads and lasses who travel to York, your away support was incredible, at home, for the fact that we'd only won just about 12 games in three seasons here, the, the support was superb and I was just a little bit disappointed we didn't give you a win on the last game of the season. But look, my focus is absolutely on the start of the season. We go back to pre-season training on Monday. Um, you'd probably be delighted, I hope, to know, I can tell you now, that we, we signed um, Keen Harris this, this morning or this afternoon. Keen Harris is a lad who most recently he's played for Swindon Town. Um, I have crossed paths with the lad a couple of times, not as his manager, but I've recruited him for other managers 
on a couple of occasions, and I saw them twice. So from that point of view, uh, you, you'll know he's a, he's, a, he's a decent player and he's a sellable commodity. So chairman will be happy for both for both of them. Um, and I'm hopeful that we'll have at least a couple more to, to announce, but we've got to get there. I never give you names until the, the, the names are on that piece of paper and Matt said in the air, it's all good. But we've got one over this morning in Keen Harry's and I'm sure you'll you'll see it was a really good addition to the group. Yeah, I'm just going to introduce you to Hugo. Hugo Langton, yeah, he's my assistant, this is manager Richards the same there's no I said this as well on social media recently, there is no hierarchy in my in my staffing. If you're my staff, I expect you or they to be of the same mindset as me. But he can stand up and question me anytime he wants in our in our own uh, domain, as can Jamie, as can Richard and, and the other the, the other support staff. But Hugo is not only a first class coach. But he's, uh, he's, he's a very educated guy. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> I know that. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Bat you're thinking Batman or you're thinking... Uh, uh, we got somewhere. We got somewhere. Anybody? We, we, tend, we, have, an, we have an announced joke. We have an announced joke with you. Whether anybody or anything that is bold, Hugo looks like him. So it could be a, drink, it could be a white cricket ball that looks like Hugo. Yeah, an egg. Could be, could be Hugo. But this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so like I said, Hugo's my right hand man, but also a coach. But he, he does a lot of the logistics for me. So you probably you probably won't know the way, the way I manage is I tend to do very little in terms of communicating with the team or the or the players on an individual on a collective basis through the week. I'm more about the basics and the, the tactical and the structure of the team that I want to put together, that's my, my domain. The rest of it, the logistics of where they've got to be, you know, if they're well, if they're not well, if they're fit, if they're not fit, it'll go through Richard and Hugo. And of course, between the three of us, we will devise all of the, the training plans and the, the fitness schedules and everything else, along with the, the sports science guys. Jamie's the head of recruitment, which sounds like a really big title, but it isn't. It's sometimes people call it chief scout, whatever you want to call it. Basically, I trust his eyes and I trust that when he goes to watch a football match, if he says to me, Tom, you need to go see this one or I'm going to put some clips together because I think this is the one that can replace him because that's what we're looking for, then I trust his eyes. From Jimmy down, we will we have people working for the club um, all over the country um, at very, very little cost, if any, to, to the football club. That makes sure we have eyes in the northeast of England, in the southwest of England. Obviously, I live the other side of the Dolphin Bridge, so I can cover all of that when I'm not uh, here as, as the manager. Um, and up in the Midlands, we're going to have somebody right down the, the southwest. So we, we feel we, we, we plan as well as we can do in the short period that I came. Um, because usually, as Jim would be able to tell you, if I had still remained at the club that I was at, there was probably five or six players I'd already agreed to sign at that club. But because I'd moved, obviously the, the domino effect that happens because I moved is yet to happen, but it will happen. There will be a lot of people leave Kingsley Town Football Club because we as a staff have left. Because they made, they made sacrifice to go and move to the backside end of the country, out of the middle of nowhere, to try and get into this division, and it never happened. So I think the whole strategy of that football club will change, but that's in my past, it's history, and I don't look, I don't drive my car looking in the rear window. I look through the front front window. So anybody want to ask me anything about that? It'll be short, it'll be shrift, but it'll be honest. <laughs> you can ask Hugo and Jamie as well if you want to ask them. Yeah. So, okay, I mean, that was a bit shorter than I thought, but... <laughs> Tommy will take some questions, uh, as indeed I think all the, he said all the staff would. So um, I'm going to start off, you can raise your hands and think about it. Tommy, did, the, did you set the players' um, targets during the off-season to come back to meet? Like, did they have weight restrictions or did they have things to meet? Yeah, I mean, I think in this day, it's very different when I played the game. I think when I, when I played the game and you got six weeks off, for four weeks, I probably didn't go home, but you know, so, you, <laughs> so it, was, it, was a, it was a case of putting, as he says, you know, so it's a case of putting on a lot of weight and then taking off a lot of weight. I think the, the modern day footballer, which our well lads are, they're very much more conscientious themselves about not 
going from you know from there to there because it doesn't do them any good. So as much as they might between each other talk about what they've been up to and what they've done, a lot of them will have been doing a lot of their own work. But obviously since um, since Hugo joined me, which behind the scenes has been since the beginning of June, is people don't realise that. Um, Hugo's been in constant contact with everybody that's contracted to the club and anybody that we're looking to bring in and now look like we are going to bring in, we're all they're all in contact with us with very, very little because what, what we what we tend to do in every club we've worked at, we have a six week programme which goes from Monday the 26th to Saturday the 5th of August and we feel what we'll give them in that six weeks game programming as well as the training programme is more than enough. So I hope, I hope they have had a rest um, and I hope they have done the little bits that Hugo's prepped them for because when they come back we've got a game in within five training sessions or over a bad shot so we've got, we've got to go there um, so they need to be up to speed. We don't want them coming back like we used to wearing black bin liners and rolling up hills to get to the top. <laughs> <laughs> we want them running up the hills. <laughs> Fair enough. No, no, I agree. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to actually, but anyway, so questions then um, from, the, from, the, from the floor. So yeah, there's one at the back there, sir. Tyler's staying, where's he going? Well, Tyler's contracted the club for the next two years, and he's not, I've not shown any want or reason to want him to leave the football club. He won every award there was here, and as we sit, we, unless somebody puts a very big number in front of me, Terry, and then the chairman, then he isn't going anywhere, and I'm very, very pleased that he wouldn't be. I think as somebody probably don't realise, I've known Tyler since he was six. He was playing in the same um, pre-academy side as, as one of my sons, and they came all the way to 16 together at Portsmouth. So I know Tyler really well, and I think I've got an in to him. That said, if he, he's a good example. If he's, if he's got ambition to play higher, he's somebody who has to look after his conditioning. And I think somebody like Hugo and what we have planned for this pre-season will probably make or break him with me because like I said I've known him a long time um, and up until coming here you have to realise he hasn't had a successful career he's been relegated three times and our back three were all relegated the back three we finished the six games with I was very well aware that all three of them were relegated the season before so the Tyler particularly but the other two as well Hajan and Corey did a hell of a, a, hell of a job in, 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 in I think uh, doing very, very well as a, as a as an early back three that I had available to me. But Tyler's been very much part of our plan. Football's a very fickle thing. I won't change my mind on Tyler, but Tyler might have his head changed by somebody else. And that's only because of the platform all the short time have given him. Uh, and that means the right number has to be offered for him to leave the football club. And that's to be a big one. To match him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you must have silenced the border, it's not it's, uh, <laughs> Right, here we go, Craig, they've uh, got a couple. How's Josh McCoy doing? Jo Josh, is, Josh is well, Josh is well. Um, he still has to go on for ongoing tests. Um, there was a manager at a club much closer to his home um, that asked me if he was uh, allowed to speak to him and have a chat, and I believe they have. Um, and I think he'll be playing nearer to home rather than coming back to all the shop next year. We've just sat through a meeting with a Fizz who's just left, Liam, and, and, and he was only available for 27 games last season, and that's not to do with the illness, that was just his general health. He, he knew. He knew that he was coming towards the end of his career at this level of the game. I mean, he had many chats, uh, some very, very personal, some difficult, to be honest with you, uh, and I've had to make some difficult choices to, to keep him in the side, but he showed unbelievable uh, strength of mind and showed what a good pro he was to be honest with you because with what was going on in his life only a week after I come in he was very emotional when he came and told me and he didn't want me to tell the, the rest of the staff or the players um, so I only confided in Terry really um, but he then chose to tell all of the players just a week well it was actually a week that we, we beat Wilson away um, so yeah it was a, that was a tough time for us all to be honest with you but he's a top top lad um, but I think he'll probably be playing here at home on the south coast next this season. Gentlemen with the green shirt, yes. What's your biggest problem? Your missus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, don't tell her that, by the way. She's probably in the dark. You wouldn't have said that if he was here, would you? Was that the question?
question, what's my biggest problem? In what respect? Well, since you joined us. Okay. Well, I haven't seen, I can be honest with you, I haven't seen any problems. I think I said it when I first, when I met the, the, the 40 or so volunteers and, and staff and supporters club and that in the afternoon when I very first come in, I said very quickly, I researched a little bit about the club. I'm not about the history of the football club, I know all about that. I'm not about the, the recent history of the football club. And what I see is support. I see supporters and I see people who want Aldershot Town to do well. And that way, they, uh, forgive me, yeah, it doesn't matter that you're in the left, the right, in the middle, or either one of the other five. If there's five factions and they all go in the opposite directions or they're all pulling away from each other, we cannot go forward together. We can't. We, you need to be on the same flight line. It's as simple as that. I asked for it for the six games, and I understand every football club I've ever been at on Sunday out. If it's not the manager, it's the chairman. If it's not the chairman, it's the doctor. If it's not the doctor, it's the bloke who used to own the club. It's, it's just the way of football is. Somebody gets it in the neck. And if it's, if it's not the chairman, it'll be me. And if it's not me, it'll be the chairman. And, that, and I get that, and he'll get that. But ultimately, we all, everybody standing in this room now, or sitting in the room now, wants us to do better. And that, that starts by winning football matches. That's all we want to do. My, my, my problem is we haven't won enough football games. But that's, that's, that's why they brought me here, I would have thought. Yes, yes, Kira. It's probably the question that other people want to ask. Were you interested? Were you interested in going on the side before you went to the final today? Who? <laughs> <laughs> He's dead to me. <laughs> Next, yes, sir. You're, you're excited to ask a question. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what I'll say about gold on the tail. I Sorry, one second. Sorry. I, I, I met Gold on the tee on the 10th of December 2021. He was 28 year old and he scored 16 goals in his life. I was with him for 15, I wasn't just with him, we were with him for 15 months and he scored a further 33. If he thinks he's going to do better playing up there than he would have done here, then he didn't want to be here. And so I don't want to be here. And he had a choice to make and he decided to go there. What I, yes is the answer to that question if they're required. I'd much prefer to build a group of players that I've said are together so much so that they are self-governing and they run their own dressing room. We ha I can only talk about my history in, in terms of how I see dressing rooms being run. The manager obviously is the head of the dressing room but the coaching staff lead the players into how we want the dressing room run. The more we can have that all bought into the badge on the front rather than the name on the back, then we've got a better chance of progressing together. We had an unbelievable dressing room, and I mean this, unbelievable dressing room at Kings Lane. I never went in it. I went in there at five to two to name the team, and I went in at five to three to give them a little G to go out. And nine times out of 10 and a half time, I would walk towards the dressing room and stop with the staff and wait for 10 minutes and let the discussions finish between the players because they knew what they were doing. If you keep bringing in people from outside, don't get me wrong, if, there's, if they have an asset that we just can't afford at this level, and they're coming from a Premier League club or a Championship club that they have express pay so they're, they're free. <laughs> so that sort of stuff, then I will dip into that, that market, but I won't, I won't rely on that to be what takes us forward. There's no point in bringing them in for a month time when just yeah. to the side. Yeah, like I said, we, we need people who can buy into what we're doing over the, over the period, not just a very short short spell. So it's not it's not primary for me, but there are certain areas of the pitch that when you're 18, 19, 20, and you're at a very, very high level of the game, it's very unlikely that that kind of player will be at this level of the game. So if you could get one of them, or two of them possibly, then it's something I would look at. But I'd much prefer to build a group of players that we could call our players, your also, players. Also, we signed a goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to be that good, we don't need one. He's <laughs> <laughs> going to build a wall. And then that's, that's, that's stage minus one, he's going to put a wall in front of the goal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to put the grass in when he burned, and that's where he's going to go. <laughs> uh, next we've got him, see, so there's uh, where the glass is there. So I can't quite hear you. Yeah, on the goalkeeping position, uh, last year, 
we didn't seem to play a substitute goalkeeper very often, and we kind of got away with it. What's your view on that? Are we lucky to play one? I didn't do substitute goalkeeper where I was before I came here. And I had a 35 year old, very experienced ex pro with about 500 games under his belt. And I always carried two youngsters at very, very little cost. So if I did need a real quick fix, I had them in the building and I could have chosen between either the one. I was unlucky enough to lose my goalie um, about six weeks before I left the club um, and he shattered his hand. But the goalkeepers that we had with us training, so they did nothing wrong for the season not to finish the way it wanted to, with they won the last seven games without the goalkeeper. So my preference is to have more players on the side because the chances of him going off are, although the risk, the height, the risks heighten these days with the daft rules of offside being allowed to play and let the goalkeeper have to come out and you know possibly make a, a foul or get injured with, with the strikers. But it's it's a it's up for debate if I'm honest with you. I mean I want a number one, uh, obviously. I know the policy at times at this club's been that we always take a a younger one from a higher club. Um, with my neck's on the line, I'm not sure I'm going to do that. Um, but we look at all options. We, we have got a couple coming in to train with us uh, on Monday. Um, one of which I hope, I just don't see any reason as long as he shows me he hasn't lost an arm or a leg, that he'll he, be good enough. So I just need to say that he's fit, fit well and, and now hopefully we can get him on board. Yes, Chris. <laughs> Excuse my ignorance, but the lad has just signed from Swindon. What position does he play? And what's the chance of us getting a decent big centre forward? <laughs> well, he doesn't play the centre forward. He's, 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 he's a left. He's a left footed centre half. I think he's about six foot three, stroke six foot four. He's played. He played in the Shield. He played in the Championship. I think when he was eighteen. And like I said, I sold him from Coventry to Swansea City when Swansea were moving up, although young Welsh internationals, so he was a young Welsh international all the way up to 21s. Um, they then transferred him over to Holland where he played in the Eredivisie for Alan Pardew. Um, he came back to Swansea and played a little bit there, but then was signed when I was at Bristol Rovers and became a really, really big part of what they were doing at the time. But they had a changeover of manager very, very quickly, three in a row, and he got pushed out to Swindon, so that's what he is. The chances of me getting a very big centre forward. Um, if the right one comes along, yes. If not, we'll deal with it without a, without a big centre off. I think the way the way I like the teams to play, I, I'm, a, I'm a possession, but I'm a forward thinking, goal scoring manager. That's what I want to do. I know that if I score more goals than the other team, then we usually win the game. So I, I, I think I rolled this stat out at the end of last season. The team that I left, there was only one team in the squad never scored a goal. Now everybody wants a 20 or 30 goal a season striker, but as people over here will tell you, they cost more money than anybody else. Well, if he was if he was 25 years younger, that's signing. I'm ready, I'm ready. I've got my black bag ready. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's stone, 25 stone, if you like, and not the years. But, but obviously, if we're, if we're interested in a striker of what the ill that you're talking about, 99% of clubs in this division will also be looking at that. So again, geography, finance, logistics of where the kid lives, so if, you know, if he's married, if he's got children, school, whatever, all of them sort of things have to be factored in. It's dead easy. Yet, you know, you could say to me, oh, why didn't you get him or why didn't you get him? And I could probably give you reasons, not excuses, reasons. I was, I'm in the market for at number nine, without a shadow of a doubt, but he doesn't have to be six foot five. If he happens to be that, and he's mobile, and he scores goals, then I haven't seen him yet. But, but, but like, I don't think the people that end all should be, he has to be a big nine. Yeah, I want presence at the front of the park. I think it's important in this league. But ultimately, if we've got a team that functions well at the back of pitch, i.e. in our own box when we're defending, and we've got a team functioning, whether it's in fluid play or in set play, at the front end of it, in their box, then I see us being competitive. The middle bit is absolute confusion. That's just up to us to get that right in the middle of the week. But nine times out of ten, you guys on a Saturday are only interested in what's happening in both boxes. So if we can master both boxes, we'd be okay. That's his job. <laughs> yes, sir. Can't see. You just see the bit low there, but I think you know the man I mean. So is your budget the same as last year? Then? 
As I said to you, I didn't look in the rear view mirror when I looked in that mirror. So I, I, I just, I look forward and I was told what the budget is. I'm comfortable working with the budget I have. I don't think that's for public consumption until the books come out because I don't know what the budget was last season. I actually chose when I came in not to know what the players were earning. I didn't ask what the players were earning, so I picked the team on what I saw on the training ground. And what I found was there was a huge disparity to the people who were getting picked and keeping this football club in this division to the people who weren't getting picked who were doing a jot to keep this club in this division. Okay? So money sometimes doesn't money doesn't make you a better player, it just makes your pockets heavier. And, and, you know, it doesn't matter who you're playing against, if they earn more money than you, just look them in the eyes, feel down between their legs. If they've got more than two, then worry about them. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Trev. In terms of recruitment, what was your number one priority, whether it was positional or individual, and have you achieved it? I could let Jimmy talk this if you want me to, but listen, at the end of the day, what we all got, that's the most important part of us, is our spine. Because if your spine is fine, the vast majority of the workings off of your spine work very, very well. So your, your sparklers, need a really good spine. And I, I, like, I like my goalkeeper and the centre off, a midfielder, possibly two, a striker, possibly three. But they're also the most, most important part of everybody else's team. We've got target lists as long as my arm, okay? And we've gone through them from the day the season finished. Jamie and I speak every day, literally do speak every day. We've met on numerous occasions as a staff on Zoom meetings. Me and Jamie must have spoken to in excess, in excess of 70, 80 potential recruits to come to the football club. Have I got exactly who I want yet? No. Have I got one in the position that I wanted? Yes. The young lad that we signed from Sudbury has been a huge surprise in this league. He'll be a real breath of fresh air uh, for you to watch, but also for him to develop in this environment. Um, I hope to be able to announce two more for you tomorrow, both of which I would probably take to any club that I went to, including another level up, simply because of the way they work and what they produce eight, eight times out of ten. So we're getting down the road of getting where we want to be, but again, at this time of the year, football's a great game, but it's an awful business. Awful business behind the scenes, because it's not like any other job where once you've agreed something with somebody, you, you ten, nine times out of ten, you shake hands, you meet in a day's time and you get the work. Football's not like that. Nearly every footballer, even at this level, have people who represent them, work for them, their agents, whatever. And the agent basically goes and gets a number off one club and just takes it around the whole the rest of them. So we, we'll miss out on players for £50, £100, whatever. Not because we wouldn't pay it, but because the agent will jump to the next one and take it because it's there. So. It's an ongoing thing, like I said, recruitment is definitely an ongoing process. Um, but I expect to have the vast majority of what we want to build towards the 5th of August by the time we go to Eastbourne, which is on the 8th of July. Yes? What sort of squad will we have? Sorry? What sort of squad will we have? Um, um, you may not know, not know this, but there were 73 players came through the door last season at this football club. 73. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think I even take them numbers round. I don't think we'll have 37. Okay? Well, that, when I'm saying that, it didn't mean 73 were actually got on the pitch, but 73 came through the training door, the training ground, was looked at for you, trial, whatever it was. We won't be doing that. Once we get... We'll have a, look, I look for a... It's very difficult to get out of my team. Once you get in it, it's very difficult to get out. It's not difficult to get in it if you do what I want you to do. And you usually do what you want you to do because I know what you can do and I know what you can't do. That's why I'd like to think the background of having recruitment sits me in a good position at a level like this. Um, in an ideal situation, I don't, we don't, I don't like working with more than 22 players in a training session because that makes makes it right in for an 11 to 11 and every derivative of that. Goalkeepers usually do often do their head catch, head catch rubbish that the goalkeepers do on their own for a while. <laughs> <laughs> they get back together at the end and smash goals. So, yeah, it's the same at every other club I've been to. So, yeah. so t 
22, but, but I'm mindful of the pathway that we need to provide for the youngsters that have been given an opportunity that I haven't had a decision to make on them because I didn't know about them. I'm happy for the people who have been in charge of them to be pushed on and they will get an opportunity to play and train in front of me and my staff. If they can get to the level that we're at, or we want them to be at, as, as early as possible, they'll stay with us. If not, it might mean they have to, to go, go out on their own like they have done in, in the past. But there's, you know, like Keen Anderson, um, Ben Schroll, Tommy Rillard, and um, Alex McAllister, and Maxi Mullins, they're all coming back because I didn't get enough time to see them in the very, very limited training time we had. Because whilst I was here three weeks last, for the end of last season, it was only three weeks really that we had six games. It was an absolutely ridiculous schedule and, it, and we didn't have that much time to train, would you believe? It was a lot more just preparation, recovery, preparation, recovery. This six weeks period is gonna give me a really good opportunity to see the young lads who've just been given their first opportunity and then boys I've just mentioned that can come back with no, there's no, there shouldn't be any pressure on them. I've spoken to one or two of their parents and I've said, look, they've got clean sheep with me. I don't care what's happened before me, but I just, there were certain things that I didn't understand when I came in here. We have Tommy Willard, who's 21, 22, uh, already played 60 games for this football club, and he's on the road of the club one level down. And I couldn't work that out. There's no logistics as to why that works. So when he came back, it was a no surprise to me that he did really well. So that him, he'll have a new lease of life because he's, he probably thinks somebody thinks a lot more of him than the previous fellas did. That's all I can think because I don't know and I don't want to know why he went out. It's none of my business. So the gentleman at the back there, he's at his end. Thank you. Yeah, just an important one. Uh, we all know every game is important in the league next season. Can you promise to drum into your players just how important Boxing Day and New Year's is? <laughs> <laughs> Two local derbies in King's Lynn, one was Boston and one was Peterborough Sports and we took 12 points out of the four games up there. So the last time I went to Woking with King's Lynn, just before I came to Aldershot and won 3-0, we won 3-0 at Woking as well. So I've got a decent record at Woking and it's the only place in the country that I ever scored a hat-trick as a professional footballer. <laughs> I think it's going very, very well. We've probably got, we can probably wrap up a bit earlier. I'm still going to offer you 10 minutes with Tommy and the team uh, along the, along the side. You must say these talk, at least hear them talk. They talk really weird, honestly. Listen. So, uh, but you all, you all seem a bit, dumb, not done struck, but maybe you've just, there you go, Steve. Well, I'd just like to hear from Jamie, actually. You yeah, offered him the opportunity. <laughs> 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 Surely, welcome to the club, both of you guys who haven't spoken. Tell us something about yourselves. Um, I'm from Bristol. Um, I'm a Bristol Ravens fan, so I'm mm -hmm. a <laughs> <laughs> Bristol I was, I was a Bristol Ravens fan. Uh, um, I, I met Tommy when um, Tommy was uh, director of football at Bristol Rovers. Um, I, I watched a lot of football for Bristol Rovers and I was quite friendly with the owner. And he put me in contact with Tommy to, um, to have a meeting with him. Tommy, uh, I guess, liked what I said because <laughs> five years later I'm still speaking to him. So uh, I started off just as a normal scout with him. I just watched games in the Southwest um, and I just did reports to him on, on potential players that we could sign. Um, as the time went on, a year later, Tommy took me on full time as a, a recruitment analyst. I did a lot more training ground stuff and did a, had a lot more to say on who we might or may or may not sign. Uh, things went a bit wrong at Rovers, Tommy left, I left, <laughs> it, it's a long story, but um, he went to King's Lynn and he asked if I would uh, assist him in his recruitment at King's Lynn. I did a lot more than just the recruitment, I did a lot of the opposition stuff, so we watched our next opposition, giving reports on their strengths, weaknesses, all that stuff, and I also helped assist him with who we brought into the football club, um, and then obviously we had a good season, and Tommy moved here, and uh, again, I've now joined here, and I helped him a little bit at the back end last season, and then now, start of this season, I've been, yeah, all throughout the summer. So, um, we speak all the time, as he said, I help, I give him players a lot that I think would be good additions. Uh, a lot of it's through through the, I, I know do a lot more of the, the data side of things than Tommy does, but I also, 
make sure that we would never just bring somebody in based off numbers. We always look to see them live and have and have watch them with our own eyes, whether it's me, Hugo, Tommy, Richard, anybody. We we all trust what everybody's opinion is. But um, but yeah, no, we speak a lot. We, our recruitment is very fluid. We got a lot going on. Um, in all positions, so um, yeah, there's a lot, a lot more to come, I expect. Hi everyone, um, you're listening. Most people know I've worked with Tom now, I don't know, eight years, the, the, probably the fifth one, <coughs> in some capacity. This is a touchy subject if you want to talk about hair. Listen, I'm quite honest, I used that wash and go once, I washed it and it went. <laughs> so I, I've been baseball this for a long time. However, my friend to the right here, <laughs> spotted by the evening. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so I've worked with Tom for a long time now and um, he's actually the only person that's just a true fact. I left working for an England manager to go and work with him at Kings Lynn, so that's a nice compliment for him. Okay, look, we, Kings Lynn is something that I, I know. I think after tonight we should stop talking about it because obviously I've come from Kings Lynn, Jamie and Tom as well. You know, we are proud of what we did at Kings Lynn, but it is in the past. But things that you know that we we know that we're good at, we hope to bring here as well. I mean, one of the things that I was very proud of is. Um, First thing that we were there, we paid out to Dover, there was 417 people. When I walked out the door, end of last season, there was 3,000 people. So the band of football that Tom and us, we want to bring to the football club, and the type of player we want to bring, we hope it's going to excite you, okay? We are really, really approachable fellas as well, okay? So, you know, obviously not during the game, but... <laughs> we, we, we will come up for a cup of tea after the game or after Shandy. Um, that sort of stuff. So please do come and talk to us, you know. We will tell you the truth as much as we can. You know, and don't ask me anything before going about uh, why are you picking it. I'm happy to explain it to you a little bit after the game. There's a lot of stuff around the tactical side and things as well. And, um, but yeah, so anyway, I left King Lynn in the last season. It's the last time I'm going to mention that football club now. And when I left, I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but when Tom rang me and uh, sold me the order shot dream, absolute no brainer for me. I live down the road in Kent, so that's why I've got the most normal accent. <laughs> I don't drink Newcastle brown ale and I don't drink cider. Okay? Just, so, so you know, so you know, after games, I do like Spanish lager if anyone wants to buy me a drink. <laughs> Anybody connected with the club, Shahid, or anyone of just the last five minutes worth of questions? It's been a great night tonight, actually, very, very positive. So uh, I thank you for that. But last question, yes, Colonel. So if you're as good as you're saying you are, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be big enough. <laughs> <laughs> Back to 10,000 people. So. If, we're, so. if we're as good as we say we are, we may be here when the stadium gets done. <laughs> What we can say is, what we, what we will try to give you is a team that first and foremost, we never have a team picked to go out and stay in a football match. We'll always go out and try and win it first. If we can't win it, we try not to lose it. That's, what, that's how I work. So if I can get that mentality through the dressing room, like I said, I'm going over all ground because I said a little bit earlier, when your dressing room is self-governing, it's much easier to do our job. And the quicker we can get the type of person and player that we want in, with the players, there are players at this football club who I've suggested and, and we will go about it very quickly to try and extend the contracts because I like what I saw in only the six weeks. But not only that, I was very well aware of them players because where they were in the division and where the team I was managing was going to go if I stayed there. So if we'd cross paths, that would, I might have nicked one or two from all the shots I stayed in Kings Lane, I don't know. But I was very well aware of the ones with the very good numbers. Anyone else? Just one. What about players who play rubbish but play better with better players around them? Oh, that was probably one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, I think that, again, that's all part of the recruitment process. It's no good as having, if we've got three midfielders and they all look like that, 
that ain't going to work because they all want to do the same thing. But if you've got one that looks like this one, then he does something different to them three. Well, yeah. so it's horses for courses. I mean, the best way to describe how we, how I recruited when I was when I was doing what Jamie was doing, and I was working for managers in the championship and League One. Rather than me saying to you, who do you want? I'd say, what exactly do you want? And because the manager was of a similar age to me, he'd say, well, look, Tom, I don't want really a Stuart Pearce type, I want a Ashley Cole type, which were very, very classic, both left-backs for England, but very different in their makeup. So if I said to you, right, I, want, uh, I don't want Jack Charlton, I want Bobby Moore, to people in here who remember the 1966 World Cup, very easily you understand that's as clear as saying, I want a black cup of coffee or a white cup of tea. So when I say to Jamie, I want a black cup of coffee to go in there, he knows exactly what I'm on about because he you knows the traits that I'm talking about because I've mentioned a player that he will he will recognise. So talking about people who are, I, I don't want to bring players here who aren't good enough in their own right. Every player that comes here, I genuinely, if I brought them, I genuinely believe they can perform or they have performed to prove it correct at this level. If they haven't performed at this level, it'll usually be because of their age, but they're on an upward trajectory. If they're coming down, I would like to say it was just, in my opinion, a bit of a coup that we got them, like a Keen Harris. My opinion, Keen Harris should be playing in the Football League, but he isn't. And we may well say another one or two people like that that are coming that way, simply because the world of football at the top end of the pyramid, and I mean, when I say pyramid, I mean the Premier League, it is just a waterfall and a cascade of English lads coming out when they're getting younger and younger. Yeah, they're aware of it. Yeah. He's putting balls down the wing and no one was there. Yeah, and they have to, and they are, they have to, they have to move down to a lower level earlier than what they probably anticipated. So you will see younger teams. I think. I think this year as well. I think we mentioned earlier. The chairman mentioned that the difference in the league this year is going to be tangible because of the two teams that went out that way without a shadow of a doubt. And I think the one or two teams who did very, very well last year, very well, I think they'll do well to sustain that. And I think it'll be a little bit more open. I think there'll be a lot more teams in the mix come January, February. So just to follow on to your point there, everyone's got bored with Notts County and Epsom uh, now. But do you think it'll be a better league this year? It'll be, it'll be, it'll be less difficult for teams like Epsom? Well, I think it should be closer. I think across the board it should be closer. I think the teams that are coming up are going to be strong. I know what they were spending last year, it's been published now, so I can tell you, they were spending 1.3 million to get out of the National North, and I had 440 grand at Kings Lane, and we went toe to toe and finished two points behind them. So I do believe you can outplay your budget, or you can outperform your budget, and we will need to do that if we were going to finish in the top echelon of the, the division. But. I mean, I think the first thing we've got to do here is we've got to get a group of lads who aren't intimidated by the fear or the anxiety sometimes created after 10 15 minutes that I saw in their last three or four games. We need to get right behind them because some of them are going to be brand new. And I've described it to the to new guys, of which there are three or four imminent, but the, the two or three that we have signed, they have to handle playing out there. This is a proper football club with proper fans. And there's not, they're not all like that in this division. And I, I don't mean to be condescending here, but this football club deserves to be doing better, doing better. And whoever's job that is, whether it's mine, yours, chairman's, everyone else, it's all of our job. Because it's all of our job to leave the place better than we found it. And I'd like to think every club I've been to, I've definitely certainly left, left it better than I found it. There was Mr. Chambers, did you have a question? Yes, you did. Did you have a question? Yeah. Um, we have got a pretty, pretty good home record here in the over years. And uh, I'd like to know if you can send away teams and the supporters home unhappy. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I, really do. so I, I think I mentioned, I mentioned it in, the, in a, an interview I, I did a couple of weeks ago with Sam. I want this to be, I think the match day experience here yeah, for all the Shot Town fan and an all the Shot Town player is excellent. It can be excellent. What I want it to be for the opposition, I don't want them not to come here and say, oh, what a horrible place that. Well, I want to say, oh, I don't want to go back and play them again. That's what we want. That's what we created in the previous club that we were at. You have, you have to make it, everybody says at the beginning of the season, you have to make it a fortress. Well, you do, you do. When I played in a team that struggled perennially in the Premier League, we hardly won a game away from home, but we hardly lost a game at home. 
Now, we, we've had it the other way around at Aldershot for a little while. If we can make this, you know, the away form in the last couple of years has actually been tandem to top six or seven in a, in a division. But because the bottom, sorry, the home form has been in the bottom four or five, that's why the, the positions finally has, has ended up where they are. So we weren't aware of what, what we need to do in terms of that. And we've gone into, we've gone into being really sensible with that and picked Wickham and Chelsea for our first two home pre-season. <laughs> 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 that might be. Yeah. But um, yeah, we're looking forward to that. I, I think this, this is a great place to play football. I've watched football here for years, and I mean for years, probably hmm, since 2005. I've been coming here on a regular basis to watch football for different reasons. So I'm, I'm well aware of what atmosphere can be when it's going well, and I can also tell you what the atmosphere is like when it's not going well. <laughs> and I much prefer it. I much prefer it when it's going well now I'm in this dugout. Brilliant. Um, I, I think we'll wrap it up, and I think it's been marvellous tonight. Just, we'll give them a round of applause in a minute, but I just want to say a couple of things. Um, I thought tonight's forum was fantastic from both parties. So I mean that. I've done a few fans forums now. There's always been a bit of, uh, you know, there's a bit of animosity from maybe the crowd, but I think everybody's listened today and everybody's brought into it. We've actually finished early, so we must have produced something for you to, to not ask a load of questions. And I'll thank you for that, so I think the forum's fantastic. Just a couple of things. Commercial Head comes on. Supporters Club are here. If you sign up for them, I think it's a tenner. I think you get your tenner back straight away with. 50p off pints and 10% in the shop. So sign up for the supporters club for us. And you can also win a free season ticket if you sign up. Oh, and you can win a free season ticket if you haven't already bought one. And, and, and you can sign up, and you can sign up with my little baby in with a shop with those guys. So please do it. You've been fantastic. And I do think that there is, at the moment, a real sense of optimism with the ground. Please send your questions in the portal. He got behind Tommy, clearly. We haven't got much more to say to him. Let's get behind him in the friendlies, let's get behind him in the early games, and let's take this football club back to where we want to be. Thank you all very much, and a round of applause. Click here for the latest match highlights, and click here to subscribe. Are you in with a shot? Look below for more information.